Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is part 2 of making my 1860s ball gown inspired by Megs from Little Women. This video will be on how I made the skirt. If you would like to see part 1 it will be listed in the description and also on the end card. I will keep you waiting and I will jump right into the video. My skirt will be pleated on the stand over a crinoline. You will need to buy a crinoline for this dress which can be bought easily online. I will also add that you will need a petticoat for this dress which you can either buy or make yourself. A petticoat is basically just a large circle skirt that will need to fit over your crinoline to go under your main skirt. It isn't featured in this video but I do have a petticoat. To be able to pleat on the stand I would advise you use a large amount of skirt fabric. I used around 4 to 5 meters but yours will depend on your height and how large your crinoline is. Make sure your crinoline is not touching the floor, it should be a little bit above the floor, at least mid calf level on your body. Then I cut a length of Peter shim to my waist measurement and marked in where my side seams would go and my back seam. However, I do not have side seams for this dress. Some of you may find that easier to do so, to be able to cut it that way, but I don't think it is completely necessary. Then as I said, I used my entire fabric width and got to pleating. I went with knife pleats to match the look of Meg's dress. If you are making a different skirt, this can also be done with box pleats and even gatherings. Make sure that your pleats are uniform, mine were about 1.5cm wide. Making them look uniform is quite important. And you will see me grab a large amount of fabric at times and pleating over it. This is to give the skirt more volume and to use up more of the fabric. Pleating on the stand can be quite time consuming but the end result is very pretty and very professional looking. I will also add that I preferred the look of the smaller pleats, however the pleats on Meg's dress seem to be about 5cm wide which is very easy to do and you can do that yourself but as I said I prefer the smaller pleats look. Make sure your pleats are as deep as possible so that your skirt has movement. Make sure that your pins are straight and vertical and towards the side of the pleat. Pin the fabric to the pleat shirt and make sure that you don't catch the waistband of the crinoline. Once I got to the centre front, I flipped the direction of my pleat so that the skirt will look as though its pleats are directed towards the centre front. This was quite difficult to make even, I'll be honest, but I did my best. This was the first time that I've tried this. If it is easier for you, I'd recommend to just keep your pleats going in the same direction. Once you get to the end, do the same as we did at the start and leave a seam allowance. If your skirt seam is at the back, leave a 10 to 15 centimeter opening for the closure. Do not worry about hemming the skirt now as I will be teaching you how to do this in a later video with a herringbone stitch. Also don't worry about hemming the opening at the back of the skirt as I will be teaching you how to do a placket. Mm. 
Press your pleats well and sew them down along the bottom of the petersham. To create a placket, measure down both sides of your skirt slit, then cut a strip of fabric to this length that is either 10cm or 5cm. If you're doing 10, the placket will be divided into two and folded and pressed. If you're doing five, you will need to cut two strips and sew a seam down the middle. Remember to add a 1.5 seam allowance around your edges. Also cut this strip out of interfacing. Plackets need to be interfaced to give them strength. Press the interfacing in place on your fabric and press your seam allowance inwards. Lay your skirt slip flat and pin your fabric strip along the outside. Once this is sewn, you will fold your placket in half and sew the back in place. This can be done by hand or by machine, but if you are sewing it by machine, make sure that you are sewing on the exact same line as the stitch line that was sewn on the front of the placket. So a small diagonal line along the bottom Once your placket is folded inwards and pressed Sew on large snaps with a triple threaded needle. Using three strands of thread will give the snaps a lot more strength and there's less risk of them coming off of the skirt.
and then the skirt is done for now. There will be no waistband as the skirt will be sewn onto the bodice and as I said I will be teaching you how to herringbone stitch the skirt hem in a separate video. So for now the skirt is done. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one.